today, an obsolete for me, I'm going to show you a couple of my old TV sets. First, I'm going to show you this one. This is my Pocket Vision. It is a handheld, a little bit smaller than Game Boy type of television. This is something I got in the late 90s. It has an aerial, kind of comes out like that, and you would hold it and watch TV. There's kind of the screen lit up there. Now, it was a, this is a very early, uh, late 80s, early 90s LCD technology. I think the liquid crystals have kind of gone kaput on this, on this particular uh, device. It's a Memorox Pocket Vision 25. And, uh, yeah, this was, um, this was my answer to my Atari Lynx not having the, uh, TV card thing like the Turbo Graphic, uh, Turbo Graphic, Turbo Express, and the uh, Sega, uh, get, uh, the Sega Portable. So anyway, um, go into what is actually in this. It has a little port up here. This is for one of these. It's like a little headphone jack cable deal. You would plug that in there for if you wanted cable. We'll just have that and you'd have your cord coming out of that. It has a little stand here for holding up your TV set. Uh, so yeah, I, I remember hooking this up to cable, but I think it only, I don't think I had a way of switching it to CA mode. It basically was set to work for over the air mode. So I had the aerial, had your standard headphone jack. I remember I did use this once on a bus trip. It has a, and it has a little knob here. I don't know if you can see it too well. One's for volume and one's for brightness. And on the front has these two buttons, which is basically your channel select, which would, how this would work was it would send a line and scan through uh, all your channels until it found something and then it would display the channel. And if you wanted to find out what channel you were on, you just hit this uh, button here and it would uh, load up the channel. So, uh, yeah, the screen is, <laughs> for a portable TV, this screen is, pretty ridiculously small. Um, let me hold it up to my cell phone, which most people today use a cell phone. So my cell phone compared to that actually is bigger than this portable TV and the screen is much bigger on my cell phone where with HD Home Run I can watch uh, over the air broadcasts. Where this thing, it is rendered obsolete in most areas because there's no more uh, analog channels. But unfortunately, now I tried to do a test here where this monitor, I'm getting some video, I'm just sending like a wi little wireless test. That's the, the, the channel vision. Just, I plugged a little aerial on it just to send it a few feet so that I can send a little demo. Now, here's demo, of course, demo, mega demo on my, that's running on my Atari XE, by the way. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, another notorious thing with these screens was those lines that would go through it. Yeah, so it's definitely not working now. Uh, I got my, so here's my Atari Link screen. I don't know if you can make out. Because actually the Atari Lynx had a much bigger screen than this thing. It was really, I didn't really use this thing a whole lot, honestly. It was more the novelty of having like a portable television uh, back in the day where nowadays people can just watch it um, you know watch people watch with their cell phones another thing that was portable back in the day was these black and white uh, monitors Curtis they made the video center I've reviewed a few retro Curtis items uh, before so yeah this one has a radio and it has you can see here it has VHF low VHF high um, UHF and AM and FM but not shortwave you have your little earphone and uh, this TV set here as well is, uh, is actually can be used for a monitor because it does have uh, a video input and it also has another one of these jacks that you plug one of these things in so you can connect it to um, either a game system or whatever although the way that thing is that's not fitting in there the way that plastic is there so that ain't happening um, yeah, so this, this was actually very interesting with this manufacture date. Manufactured August 2002. 
Like, at that time, I did not think they were still making black and white televisions, but I guess, you know, for a portable little TV like this in 2002, they were still, uh, they were still making, um, portable TV sets. And, honestly, the monitor on this black and white looks better and brighter than this. Because it's a CRT and this is early LCD technology, it's actually brighter and you can see this monitor much better. And then the Atari Lynx, well, I've seen a lot of people do online. There's the blue lightning planes flying around. Um, a lot of people have uh, actually updated the Atari Lynx screens uh, to uh, be able to have a better screen because these screens were this is a 30-year-old LCD screen, so it's hard to make it. I have to put it in the shade here. But those early LCD screens definitely were hard to make out. I think it would look more better and sharper when I had this thing in the early 90s. Epix. They actually, Epix was the company that designed what was originally called the Handy and became the Atari Lynx. I probably looked a little silly walking around, you know, like with my aerial out and like you know, your walkie-talkie TV deal. Um, holding this thing and trying to like watch TV. I didn't really do it too much for that, but I was a kid. I, I thought, oh yeah, that's cool. Um, another thing about this with the aerial, the aerial, um, in my area, we only got like maybe two or three over the air channels to get this. But one thing I did notice with us, I had another portable TV back in the day as well. And the antenna, the, uh, the antenna t um, reception was a very sensitive. And I remember it worked very well. And it could also have been the pixelated screen uh, helped so you wouldn't see the snow with the old analog picture. But, uh, yeah, definitely, uh, <laughs> pretty, uh, I don't know. I thought it was neat back in the day, but really the practical use of this thing for the two channel, two or three channels you got and to be able to watch TV on the no, on the go. Now, in retrospect to today, where I consider myself a news junkie and like at six o'clock, if I'm out somewhere at six o'clock and I want to watch the news, it would be kind of cool, but now you can, if you have uh, a Wi-Fi or if you have an internet connection, Wi-Fi, in internet connection, most local news channels, you can stream the local 6 o'clock news to your phone and uh, and watch it where I think mine does have that. Technology. This was the predecessor to the smartphone. Where is my... This is the predecessor to the smartphone. So yeah, yeah I, might, I might look have looked like a little bit odd back in the 90s walking around with TV, but today you see that every day. It's like I was just ahead of my time by maybe 20 years. Pretty darn neat though. Uh, it's a shame this thing's not working. Like it's, it light, lights up, but it's not really, I've been, I was trying to like t tune in a few channels where I was able to get on that TV, but I wasn't able to get it on this thing, unfortunately. That's my TV, this is my Portable TV doesn't really work anymore. Oh yeah, and I'll should show you the case. This is the case it came in. This is a little vinyl plasticky case, um, and we just kept it in there. And you can keep it on your, you know, from your screen getting uh, uh, scratched or whatever. I know it's thick too. I don't know if I showed you the batteries on this thing. So it would have taken. I got them here. Four double A batteries with a little stand out here holding it up. And uh, I forget when this thing was manufactured. I do remember getting it in the early 90s. I tried fixing the contrast or whatever, but it just wasn't working. It also had a little 3 volt power adapter thing here. I think I did have an adapter for this. Was it 3 volt? 6 volt. Sorry, my mistake. Oh, I used to just use one of those multi. Uh, uh, selector plugs, which is probably the, the power supply was as big as this thing, and uh, ran it into that. And on the other side, the antenna side, you got your standard headphone jack. There's a little um, con. What's that say? Contrast adjustment there, and the antenna jack on the top. And there's nothing really on the bottom there. The stand here just easily pops out like that, and you can stand up your TV. I thought it was like mainly for a like you know a belt clip, but it's not really a belt clip. It's just more of a 
a thing that you can use to stand up your TV. But the funny thing is, I actually saw these in like discount stores like Giant Tiger. And uh, yeah, Giant Tiger had these for under $100. I think I got this thing in the old Radio Shack store back in the early 90s and they still had Radio Shack here in Canada. And um, so Memrox, it was not a, uh, what was the realistic brand, uh, which was a, which Radio Shack sold a lot of. So there's what it looks like next to my Sad Hero. My Sad Hero is a little bit bigger, uh, the Sad Hero 300. Some more buttons, more features. Obviously, it's going to control some satellites, so it's going to have to have a few more buttons. Uh, I tried even connecting it here just to do a direct feed from my uh, channel vision output, but no, no, it's not been able to pick up anything, unfortunately. I think this thing is kaput. I'm just trying to see if I can get it working. Uh, I just wanted to show this to you guys and show you some of my old TVs.